I wish that Dallas was here to summarize his life mission because um, it was the nature of his life and his mind to be so um, broad, the range of issues that he would talk about and bring light to was so broad, it would be hard for me to summarize them. But I would say if there was one message, it was to help people understand the reality of the kingdom of God, that is the reality of how good God is. Why is our picture of God so important? Well, it's just so important for many reasons. I think that uh, it's important because I think many of us have kind of a default picture of God that we resort to when life crashes around us and then we immediately go to our default and usually our default picture of God is that God must be against us. Um, you know, how, how can this have happened to me? God must, God must have it in for me in some way. And I think it's just very hard for us to g develop a genuine friendship with a God that deep down we feel is against us. It's kind of psychologically impossible. You know, how can I love someone who's out to get me? Dallas had said that the single most important thing in our mind is our idea of God and its associated images. And then he used a quote from A.W. Tozer that, that referenced uh, somewhere under the rubble of everything else that we think we believe lies our real belief about God, our images. And I think many people find themselves in that very deep bind. Um, so we might profess a love for God, but deep down within us there's our default picture and that it's a picture that we resort to usually when life crashes or goes wrong or doesn't turn out right. So I think we really need to look very honestly uh, at our default picture of God. This resonated so much with me because I had been doing therapy and inner healing with people um, for oh, 20 years or so at that time, and that's what I had experienced on a practical level was that there what they came in professing to know was very different on a deep level when they got into their memories and the way that they would see Jesus enter the picture, that often there was a lot of uh, negative uh, imagery there that w would need to be um, redeemed. The most important ideas that we have are the ideas that we have about God. And I think he knew that because of the consequences uh, of those ideas. He would constantly say, uh, we live at the mercy of our ideas. And the most important ideas that we have are our, are our ideas about God. Because they affect who we become, they affect our relationship with God, they, reflect how, uh, they affect how we live in the world, they affect everything. And the idea of that at its core, Dallas would say, is you just simply take, what's the stuff that you really believe about God? Not necessarily the things that you say that you believe about God, but at the deepest level, like the way that you believe in gravity. You know, you don't have to demonstrate to anybody that you believe in gravity. You don't have to wake up in the morning and say, today I'm gonna be really committed to gravity. It's part of your mental map. It's part of your, the furniture about how things are. And Dallas would say, that's the level of belief that really matters. Most of us just saw the last 20 or 25 years of life when it came, became so intensely real. But it was like, um, here's a person um, <laughs> that actually believes in it, 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 and is experiencing what he's talking about. There was, there was an authenticity and there was a, a, a weight of uh, credibility with, with what he would say. If it felt like he was doing what I hope someday to do, and that is talk about these things, not theoretically, but out of yesterday's lived experience. He was doing that. 
there would be times when Dallas would talk about how good God is, what a good person God is. And I would look over at my wife and there'd be tears running down her face. Because most of us, even if we've been around the church for a long time, um, forget about or never really understand or think deeply about the sheer goodness of God. And Dallas, in his words, and more than that, in his body, in his person, when he was with people, had a way of manifesting the goodness of God. Dallas had a, a wonderful sense of humor, and I um, would have to sp spend some time now thinking back about the, some of the things, but it was just expected. We just lived with it all the time. We we laughed and made jokes and, and had fun a lot. One of the cool things about Dallas is, again, he was super smart and often with a person who's that bright, there'd be this sense of gravitas but he could also be just engaging and silly. And I remember another friend, Jim Smith, saying he was watching television with Dallas and they were just channel surfing. And on some channels, somebody, there was like, I think it was the Samba going on or something like that. And Dallas got up in Bermuda shorts and wingtip shoes and he's like dancing the Samba while they're looking at some infomercial on TV. Um, so there was this side of him that could just be goofy and childlike um, in ways that were really, really appealing. It was a, in that area where I was really challenged by, by Dallas. <clears throat> and I was challenged in this way, in that I was also reading through uh, the divine conspiracy as he was writing it. So I was reading kind of chapter by chapter, and um, it was after I had read the third chapter that I expressed concerned him. I had come out to the USA and I was staying with him. Very funny. One of the things that people bring up in the divine conspiracy as a problem is in the third chapter where I mentioned that God is actually happy. And it's almost like, how could he possibly be? And it is because of his knowledge of himself. And when we get to know him, we will experience some of that same happiness. I had read his statement in the, that God is the most joyful being in the whole universe. And I really couldn't accept that. And I thought that he, I felt quite strongly that he, that he had not paid enough attention to the God who suffers. And when I said that to him, uh, he, he asked me the question, you know, Trevor, is your God gloomy? And it was a question that, you know, just stopped me in my tracks. And it was a question that also began, uh, initiated another journey for me in kind of re rethinking my understanding uh, of God. Dallas used to say that God's character was so massive and big that he could simultaneously hold great joy and happiness and at the same time experience deep grief and sorrow over what was happening to his children and things of that sort. And so that notion of understanding what joy is that actually if you have a pervasive sense of well-being, um, joy is the inevitable byproduct of that. And Dallas would say, you can't actually attain joy by trying to pursue joy. Um, he distinguished between emotions, feelings, and conditions. And he said, uh, what Paul talks about is the fruit of the Spirit, like love or joy, are actually conditions. I can enter into the condition of being a joyful person just like an, I can enter into the condition of being a skilled tennis player. And ironically, if you idolize the feeling, you will never do the things that you need to do to enter into the condition. So when you define joy as a pervasive sense of well-being, it becomes clear that it is not in contrast with grief 
and that you can have a sense of well-being even though there are reasons for there to be sorrow at the same time. One of the phrases that gets thrown around in the church a lot is to glorify God, that we were made to glorify God. And if I were to talk about Dallas's great mission, it would be to glorify God. But then what does that mean? And Dallas would say, Dallas often said, to glorify God means to live in such a way that when people look at you, they say, what a good God God is to think up a person like that. That's what it means to glorify God. Let your light so shine that when people look at you, they see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And Dallas lived in such a way that when people were with him, they would think, what a good God God is. And that was his great gift.